ሃይ እንዴት ናችሁ ሰላም ነው ወይ ጥናት ተስፋ ጥሩ እንደሆነ ተስፋ አደርጋለሁ ትምህርት በኦንላይንም ጥሩ እንደሆነ ተስፋ አደርጋለሁ ይሄ ሶስተኛ የሌክቸር ሲሪየሳችንና ዛሬ የምናወራው የሴፍ ማዘሮት ኢኒሼቲቭ ላይ ይሆናል ሶ uh these are the objectives the learning objective for today's section in general um when we say safe mazarut that's uh, making mazarut safe in, uh, this is the general the general term that applies to the overall health of uh, the mother particularly during uh, reproductive age uh, group uh, women Uh, plus uh, during the state of uh, pregnancy and childbirth and postpartum okay so that us uh, when you say safe mother it is a comprehensive term uh, that encompasses the care given during pregnancy childbirth <coughs> and postpartum uh, so it is not only includes the, say, the care given during pregnancy childbirth and postpartum it also includes uh, or encompasses the socio cultural aspect of uh, the mother plus the health system and the health policy in general okay and the other one is uh, it ensures uh, the the all women uh, will receive a quality uh, health service during pregnancy childbirth and postpartum okay so this is uh, the general uh, definition of uh, safe mother so the safe mother initiative is started in Nairobi Kenya after the summit of uh, after the summit of 1987 by different stakeholders and countries different countries so in nairobi kenya they made uh, you know, an interagency groups that follows a safe mother route initiative uh, so those stakeholders that that form interagency group were uh, unicef ndp world bank ipf and so on so there are also other countries and uh, Uh, the stake different stakeholders so the major aim of the safe mother initiative is that uh, to give um, awareness for the global about maternal mortality and morbidity uh, second major objective of uh, this summit in nairobi was uh, for international call to reduce maternal mortality okay so that after three years of uh, uh, safe mother initiative after 1987 Uh, more than 150 countries adopted the plan that were developed by the safe mother initiatives okay to reduce maternal uh, morbidity and child morbidity when you see the events that or the conferences that are related with safe mother are uh, for instance before the 1978 uh, the, the the different programs were focused to the basic health service and clinics uh, 1978 Uh, the so called the primary health care uh, declaration okay in canada set uh, for mother, mother and child health services family planning services and different different health services uh, to be at community level and health at, at the health facility level okay answer is at the 1987 safe mother Road initiatives which gives emphasis to the reduction of uh, maternal mortality The other one is the 1994 Population and Development Conference at Cairo, Nairobi, at, at Cairo, Egypt. So it mainly gives emphasis to uh, the reproductive health of uh, women in general. Okay. So if you remember on the history of uh, uh, reproductive health, we, we have discussed uh, AIMS uh, program of actions of uh, 1994 ICPD. Okay. Uh, the other most important element is that the 2000 millennium development goals i think uh, most of us knows uh, about six goals which 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 could be achieved on 2015 okay so one of the the, the goal related is maternal health is at reducing maternal mortality by 75% in 2050 okay these are the major events related is uh, safe mother When you see the, re- the rationales or the importance of uh, of uh, safe mother initiative why safe mother initiative 
is very important. Or why, what is the, 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 the significance of safe mother of initiatives? Okay, the first most important reason for safe mother of initiatives is that the big discrepancy between developing countries and developing countries in relation to maternal mortality. Okay, um, and the other one is the high magnitude of maternal mortality. Okay, the high magnitude of maternal mortality and the big discrepancy between uh, developing countries and developed countries is the reason for a safe motherhood initiative. Okay, for instance, in uh, the the lifetime risk of maternal mortality in developed countries is zero is one in three thousand eight hundred, uh, whereas the lifetime risk of maternal death in developing countries is one in one hundred fifty women. Okay, so that uh, the this means that uh, from uh, 150 women who are pregnant, uh, one of one of the women will die because of uh, pregnancy-related complications. Whereas uh, in developed countries, from 3,800 pregnant mothers, one of them will die uh, because of pregnancy-related complications. So that you can see here the big discrepancy between uh, the life between those two um, regions. Okay. The other one is uh, for the global maternal mortality. Developed countries only contribute 0.5, whereas developing countries contribute 99% of uh, maternal mortality. So that this is the big discrepancy uh, between the, the big discrepancy and the big disparity between developing and developed countries on maternal uh, days. Okay. Um, so that when we see also the, the, the share of maternal mortality for, from the global burden of disease, one eight percent, eighteen percent of uh, the global burden of disease is contributed by maternal uh, health conditions. Okay. The uh, the other most important uh, rationale for safe motherhood initiative is that the economics of making safe motherhood. Okay. We can see in two dimensions. One is that. Uh, by preventing loss of a mother, uh, we will gain uh, benefits of uh, economy. And second thing is that we are preventing the adverse uh, effect on the families because of loss of the mother. Okay, so that um, uh, you can preserve labor supply, you can preserve uh, productivity, economic well-being of the community, and so on. Okay, uh, so that uh, the death of a mother in the family will result in loss of many things, okay? And loss of uh, welfare for that family because most of the welfare activities in the household is handled by a woman, okay? Or a mother and so on. So that a loss of those welfare activities in the household results in many uh, negative economic uh, uh, complications. The third rationale of uh, Safe Motherhood Initiative is that uh, pre preserving the life of the mother or making the motherhood safe uh, increase the survival of children okay or it can result in uh, or it can prevent the death of uh, under five children and children and so on okay uh, for instance in a study conducted in Bangladesh a death of a mother results in a death of under five children and children three to ten times than that of survived mother's family. Okay, so that death of a mother will increase the death of children, a death of under five children, and so on. By the way, we will see uh, in details on impacts of maternal days later on on uh, in our discussion for impacts of uh, maternal days. Uh, so that uh, uh, this increase in neonatal and child days. Uh, the, the increase in neonatal and child days might be happened because of the days of a mother. And the fourth rationale for safe motherhood initiative is that uh, it is because of it is highly cost effective. That means it is not expensive to invest on a safe motherhood initiative. For instance, by investing uh, safe motherhood initiatives, you can prevent 58% of maternal mortality and uh, you can increase antenatal care service by 26%, okay? For instance, in developing countries, for basic maternal health services, uh, you need only less than $2 per person. That means 70 per uh, in, at, at this time in our country. The other one is for the care given for the whole of 
the 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 safe mother initiatives you can invest only 230 dollar uh, per person okay so this shows that a safe mother initiative as uh, the safe mother um, the safe mother practices or services are not expensive okay so the the 1987 uh, safe mother initiative use different strategies to implement uh, to 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 use different strategies to to reduce maternal morbidity and mortality okay uh, one of the strategy is that as i told you earlier it gives greater visibility to the hidden inequity okay the hidden inequity in maternal ill health for instance you only see the maternal days the, the disparity between developing countries and developed countries 99 percent of maternal mortality of the global occurs in developing countries, whereas 0.5% of uh, maternal mortality occurs in developed countries. So those two figures shows the hidden inequity in maternal ill health. Okay. The second strategy was putting maternal mortality at the forefront of uh, international public health. Okay. And the third uh, strategy was using risk assessment approach during pregnancy. Okay. Uh, this means that. Uh, uh, using risk assessment approach means that classifying a pregnant woman based on uh, different variables, whether high risk or low risk. Okay, so that uh, we will see the, the the major drawback of this strategy later on. Uh, but one of the strategy was using uh, this strategy, uh, using risk assessment approach during pregnancy, and the the fourth one is. <clears throat> I uh, promoting use of non physicians like traditional birth attendant to attend uh, low risk women. Okay, low risk women during pregnancy. We will show also the the drawback of this strategy. The other most important strategy uh, written by the Safe Mother Initiative or used by Safe Mother Initiative is that using family planning methods to avoid unwanted or unintended pregnancies. And the other strategy is availing and accessing uh, accessibility of um, referral service and improving in general the status of women okay when you say improving the status of women it is the empowerment of females for instance affirmative action in our country is one of uh, the, the example for improving the status of women okay um, affirmative action in education affirmative action in uh, different discipline is one of the practice to increase the status of uh, a woman. The other strategy used by 1987 uh, SMI or Safe Mother Initiative is that the changing laws and practices. For instance, uh, currently early marriage is prohibited in our country, uh, female genital mutilation is prohibited in our country, and so on. Abduction is prohibited in our country. Those all things are prohibited. Um, because of changing laws and practice okay so changing in laws and practice are the results of uh, safe mother initiatives okay uh, the other um, thing is that uh, that we have seen is that the benefits of safe mother initiatives so one of the strategy as i told you earlier is that uh, giving greater visibility to a maternal ill health inequity and the other one is it gives understanding of the root cause of maternal mortality and uh, also putting maternal mortality on the forefront of uh, international public health agenda, okay? So currently all those things are implemented. Uh, when we see the weakness of uh, the safe motherhood initiatives, um, uh, the, those weakness, the, the, the weakness and strengths of uh, safe motherhood initiatives, it, it is evaluated after 10 years of implementation, okay? Evaluated in 1997 in uh, Sri Lanka. When you see, when we start from the strings, there are different strings uh, during the 10 year implementation of uh, 1987 Safe Motherhood Initiative. One of the strings uh, is that uh, the strong political commitment by different governments uh, involving national involvement of national and local leaders, involvement of community members, uh, training and deployment of different healthcare professionals. And the other one is the effective referral system. So these are the most important five strings of the safe mother root initiatives. Okay, but when we see the weaknesses of uh, the safe mother root initiatives, one of the weaknesses is that um, 
the specific cause of uh, inability to identify the specific cause of maternal mortality was one of the one of the weakness of uh, the safe motherhood initiatives. This is because uh, it's very important to identify the specific cause of maternal mortality in order to prevent further complications, uh, further increment of maternal mortality, and so on. Uh, so inability to identify specific cause was one of uh, the weak uh, side of the safe motherhood initiatives. And the other one is the strategies were not cost effective in general and comprehensive at all to uh, reduce morbidity and mortality. And the other one is the project didn't establish mechanism to measure progress or in general the projects that, that, that were implemented because of the safe motherhood initiatives, they don't have a monitoring and evaluation system to see the success, the success and challenge of uh, the implementation. And the other one is the uh, different projects, so they, they were not uh, collaborative uh, uh, in general. That means there is lack of collaboration to implement projects, okay? Uh, for instance, in order to halt um, or in order to increase the referral system, you need to have road, you need to have ambulance service or car and so on. Uh, so that this to, to, to avail car, to avail a road for the health facilities needs collaboration between road authority and uh, the healthcare system in general, okay? So if there is no collaboration between the road authorities of the local government and uh, the healthcare system, you will not have a road for that health facility. So that collaboration is very important to, uh, to, for the success of uh, implementation. The other uh, weakness of uh, this uh, 1987 uh, Safe Mother Rule Initiative is that uh, use of uh, risk assessment approach during pregnancy. That is because of uh, uh, the woman classified as high risk might end up with low risk during child delivery, during postpartum period. A, child, a, a mother, a pregnant mother classified as low risk may end up with high risk and the vice versa. Okay? Uh, those things increase the adverse outcome of pregnancies and childbirths during pregnancy and childbirth. Okay? So that using risk assessment approach was not uh, an effective strategy or an effective strategy to reduce maternal morbidity and mortality, rather it increases the adverse outcome or it increases the morbidity and mortality. The other, uh, you, the other strategy used was uh, inculcating non-health professionals uh, by training, like uh, tra using traditional birth attendant to attend a low risk woman. Uh, so this strategy also end up with a high number of adverse outcomes, okay, high number of uh, adverse outcomes during pregnancy and childbirth. Uh, so uh, there are uh, the, the, there are different uh, uh, components, essential components of safe motherhood initiatives or safe motherhood uh, services. Uh, the first most important element of uh, the safe motherhood uh, services that community education. Okay, community education on safe motherhood is one of the most important element of safe mother. For instance, uh, in our country, using antenatal care service, delivering at health facility, attending antenatal care, attending postnatal care service, uh, using family planning service, those all services are very low in our country. This is because of the low awareness level of the community. Okay, the low, the low, the low literacy level of our community, the low health literacy level of our community, and so on. So that those things are happen because of the different socio-cultural factors. Okay, so that those socio-cultural factors, those 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 uh, low utilization of antenatal care service, skilled birth attendant, postnatal service, family planning service, should be changed through community education. Okay, so that uh, community education on safe motherhood is very important to change behaviors of the community. A second most important. Um, essential element or, or services at the prenatal care and counseling during pregnancy, okay? So during pregnancy, as you know, pregnancy ha is a risk. Pregnancy is a risk. So that it is a risk because of its complications. It's, it, it is because of uh, complication plus because of its physiologic changes during pregnancy, okay? So that uh, because of those physiological changes, anemia might happen, hemorrhage might happen, 
a different complication might happen like hyperemesis gravidarum, nausea, vomiting and so there might be many complications like gestational diabetes mellitus, hypertensive disorder of pregnancy. All those things happen because of the physiologic changes uh, of pregnancy or because of the uh, risks of uh, uh, pregnancy in general, okay? So it's very important to have uh, antenatal care service or prenatal care services. The other one is skilled assistance during pregnancy. As you know, skilled assistance during pregnancy is very helpful to reduce uh, maternal health, uh, maternal complications uh, uh, like um, uh, hemorrhage and so on. Okay, uh, care for obstetric complications, postpartum care, post-abortion care, family. Those the care given uh, during uh, for obstetric complications, postpartum care, and post-abortion care are very helpful to reduce obstetric complications and to increase the survival of the mother, okay? Not only the, for the survival of the mother, for instance, postpartum care is very important also to increase the survival of the child, okay? Uh, family planning service is very important to reduce unintended pregnancy or unintended pregnancy so that it's very important to reduce abortion and so on because of uh, if, you, if you prevent unintended pregnancies, you can easily prevent uh, abortions okay so that uh, family planning is also one of the essential service for safe motherhood the other one is the reproductive health education and service for adolescents so these are the eight components of uh, safe motherhood uh, services when it is the pillars of safe motherhood services there are around five pillars of safe motherhood the first is very important family planning as i said earlier you can reduce unintended pregnancy, you can reduce different high-risk fertility behaviors by providing family planning. A second, antenatal care service, you can prevent a loss of the fetus, you can prevent uh, mortality, you, you can prevent the obstetric complications like hemorrhage and so on, hyperemesis gravidar and preeclampsia and so on. Obstetric care, postpartum, uh, post-abortion care, STD and HIV infection, these are the most important pillars of uh, safe motherhood. The other most important element is the basics, the basics for the safe motherhood. Uh, the basics for the pillars of safe motherhood is communication for behavior change, as I said earlier, uh, changing the behaviors of uh, the community, changing the bad sociocultural factors to reduce morbidity and mortality are very important. The other one is primary health care, equity and education for women. So these are the base for the base for the pillars of uh, uh, safe motherhood uh, uh, practices, okay? Uh, thank you so much for, uh, this is all about today's sections. Later on, uh, next time we will see uh, maternal days, uh, cause of maternal days, and uh, risk, factor, uh, risk factors of maternal days. Also, we will see also the, uh, our country situations, situation, uh, about uh, maternal days. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, uh, suggestions, comments, and so on, you can send through email, you can send through Telegram, you can send through the YouTube channel, okay? So thank you so much for your attendance.